We begin this afternoon's plenary session with improving the predictability of project outcomes from Research Team 291. Our presenter is Rick Servin, currently serving as the Business System and Process Development Manager for the Asia Pacific LNG Project, a joint venture operated by ConocoPhillips. During his 29 years with the company, he has held various leadership positions in both project services management and finance. Ladies and gentlemen, Rick Servin. Good afternoon. I know most of you have been wondering what I've been doing walking around with this hockey stick the last two days. Give me about three minutes and I'll explain. Again, my name is Rick Servin. I'm here to, to, to provide an overview of Project 291, Improving the Predictability of Project's Outcome. I want to start, I want to begin the session by taking an informal survey. And I, I need everybody's participation. I, I'm, we're not going to use the clickers. I'm just going to ask a few questions. And if it pertains to you, I want you to raise your hand. Are we ready? Let's go. I better go the other way. Have you struggled? or been challenged to predict accurate project outcomes early in the project execution process? Come on. Just about everybody. I see some people raising two hands. I feel your pain. All right. Have you been surprised with last minute supplements? Hmm. How about this? How many of you see value in knowing final outcomes early in project execution? Does anybody see a value in that? Well, I'm, I'm in the right place. You know, I, I, I think that you, by, the, by the number of hands that were raised, that uh, we can agree that this subject is, is both pertinent and timely. I think we were here last year at the same time in this, in this same conference, and we were informed that due to the industry's inability to predict was costing billions of dollars. I want to go back and, uh, and uh, uh, for those of you who raised your hands uh, the last survey, if you did, some of these conditions might have sound familiar. And I'm fixing to get to the hockey stick, so please pay attention. Does forecasting seem to start only after significant project completion? Are you familiar with that? Is that the way it works in most of your companies? I can't say for ConocoPhillips, otherwise I'll get in trouble. Does negative trends and events remain hidden and unreported. Yes? Does that sound familiar? Late and undesirable costs and schedule surprises appear frequently. My friends, if you're familiar with those, if you're familiar with those conditions, then you've been, you've been the symptom of the dreaded hot hockey stick. Do you know what I'm talking about? Do you know what I'm referring to? It's those forecasts that begin here with the baseline and continue to report the same thing until we to get about 70% complete. And then the project team comes in and says, surprise, we're out of money and we're six months late. Can you relate to the hockey stick? I don't hear anybody, can you relate to the hockey stick? <laughs> good, amen. How about this? Is that just as good or bad? Of course it is. This has different situations, but you come here and they hold the good news until the very end, until there's no more risk and then they let the money go. This is the hockey stick. This is what we call the hockey stick syndrome. Improving predictability provides both time for corrective action and it adds significant value. Now, I'm not here to insult your intelligence. I know that there's no way that you can eliminate all surprises. That's just not possible. But the quicker you know something, the more time you have to mitigate. And that's the key here. That's the key here. And that also brings this other fact, that when we're talking about predictability, we're not just talking about accuracy. To truly add value, predictability must be two-dimensional. 
not only addressing accuracy, but more importantly, when do you know the final outcome? In this particular case, timing is everything. Just want to take some time to introduce our research team. Our previous speaker spoke about passion. I can guarantee everybody in that, in that, in that group had a lot of passion for the subject. Uh, the team was very well balanced. We had uh, uh, members from uh, owners, uh, members uh, from uh, contractors, as, as well as the government. Uh, a lot of experience, a lot of passion, and I think that uh, a lot of good results as a result. Our goal of this research was very simple. We wanted to break the code for predictability. We wanted to understand what makes good predictors. And they're out there. There are some that are doing a good job. And we wanted to develop practices, recommendations, and tools that will sit, assist project teams to accurately, and just more important, timely predict project outcomes. We, again, we wanted to crack the code. Our project methodology consisted of three phases. First one was data collection, statistical analysis, and the statistical analysis was done, we focused the analysis on trying to understand what makes a good predictor versus what makes a bad predictor. And then tool development. Obviously, we wanted to be able to apply the learnings from this research team. If you note, we received, we received data on 135 projects. And, and I, wanna, I just want to take this opportunity. That's, that's, I know that we hassle a lot of you and ask a lot of information. But I was really amazed of the, of the, of the, uh, of the response that we got to our request. And I, and I want to take the time to, to thank those companies who participated, not only in providing projects, but also validating the tools that we'll be talking about later. I, I think that you would be rewarded with the results of the study. The first problem that we encountered when we were doing this research was, what is predictability? How do you measure predictability? You know, we knew that we had to go beyond the traditional approach, which is basically taking the initial promise, the AFE, and comparing the AFE to the final outcome. We knew that we had to go beyond that. We came up with a nifty formula, which is two-dimensional. It takes into consideration both time and accuracy. We call it the predictability index. Okay, and this, and this calculation focuses on the area of error. Now, I've only been given 10 minutes, and I'm running out of time already, I can see. So I, I'm, just based on this illustration, you can see two projects, projects A and project B. And you can see that both of them had the same outcome but Project B forecasts earlier. Project B is a better predictor. Do I have you confused? I hope not. I hope I have you curious, and I hope you come and visit our breakout sessions this afternoon and tomorrow morning, where our team is going to go a little bit deeper into a better understanding of this predictability index. Once we had the tool to measure predictability, we turn our attention to trying to find out, isolate, trying to understand what makes a good predictor versus a poor predictor. We, we believed that by identifying and isolating those behaviors, we could help companies become better predictors. I'm here to, to inform you and, and that our data clearly indicates that there are significant differences between the two. We were pleased to report that we found, identified 43 behaviors, 43 behaviors that were statistically correlated to good predictors. Do you want to know what those are? If you do, come to our afternoon session. We'll go into more in detail. To help explain, to be able to apply these learnings, we grouped these behaviors into four categories. Human behaviors and organizational culture, project characteristics, forecasting pra practices, and management processes. 
Which ones do you think has the, has the most impact on predictability? To our surprise, the one that had the most impact is human behaviors and organization culture. Does that make sense? So it takes more, you know, you got to have the data. You, you, you got to have the right people. You have to have the processes and you have to have the tools. But you also must have the organization and you, the, the organization structure and an environment that encourages and rewards transparency. So we're not, we, we didn't come here with a magic tool. We basically found that human behavior is the cost of a lot of our issues around predictability. Significant findings. Again, there are different execution differences between good predictors and bad predictors. As I mentioned, we found 43 behaviors that are highly correlated to good predictors. In addition, we found 36 change reasons that most influence predictability. I am sure all of you are, are, are curious to find out what these are. And we welcome you this afternoon as well as tomorrow morning. Once we unlock the predictability code, the team then focuses attention to developing a practical implementation model to help members become more predictors. We wanted the companies to be able to apply what we learned. We came up with what we call a forecasting model. And this model is basically based on the four broad categories, groupings, and practices and behaviors that were found to influence and have a strong correlation to good predictability. Note that this includes a fifth column, and that fifth column is continuous assessment. That indicates that predictability is not static. You cannot just go at the beginning of the project, set it up, and think you're going to do a good job. It has to be continuously assessed. And as you will also note, that human behavior organization forms the basis of our model, indicating the importance of its behaviors on predictability. Our product summary, so far we have uh, uh, RS-291, which is available. It's an imp improving the predictability of project outcomes, which is now published. We have the forecasting for early predictability and the predictability index, which will be published in the, in the near future. The team developed two tools, two tools. These are Excel-based tools. One tool is the forecasting assessment tool to evaluate how your company or how your project is doing against those 43 behaviors. The second is a predictability index for benchmarking to be able to benchmark predictability in the future. Both of these assessment tool and predictability index will be demonstrated this afternoon and tomorrow morning as well as practical applications. We already have some companies who are actually utilizing this, so we have some examples how these tools have helped some projects already. Key insights. A project team cannot eliminate surprises. I want to be very clear. I think that was part of our research question, was to eliminate surprises. You cannot eliminate surprises. There always will be something. But early recognition can help you mitigate and add value. Early predictability has significant influence on project value. Here's one that we found. It's not really the, the external factor. It is not, it is not uh, a foreign exchange. It is not commodity prices. It is not uh, quantity problems. It is how you handle the factor that influences predictability. It's not the factor itself. And Predictability performance should be benchmarked. So I recommend to you, come join the first quartile. Help me break the hockey stick syndrome. I'm surprised it worked, I'm telling you. <laughs> this, this was engineered by URS, so thank you, URS. Uh, 
I've plotted the predictability model. Uh, use the forecasting tool. Come and meet our, meet our, 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 our team. Uh, learn how to use the forecasting predictability model. They have actually, they're planning to put an actual demonstration uh, for you. Discover how much value early, early predictability can bring to your projects. As I mentioned, we have two, two meet, two, uh, two workout sessions that we have a panel for each. Uh, very experienced, very knowledgeable, and as our speaker before, very passionate about the subject. Again, our team is the Mediterranean uh, 1 and 2. We have one today at 4.30. I know it's late, but just think about it. You're going to know those 43 reasons. That's just important enough. And the other one is at 9.10 tomorrow. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.